Today I'm in a sleepy rural village in the east of Hungary. I'm going to go for a stroll and I'll show you some typical village streets and then I'll even go to a very cute local restaurant. Join me! I'm in Kunmadarash today, a small village of 5,000 people. Let's have a walk around. Someone's on a swing behind me. It's pretty cold, but um, it's also lovely because the sky is really blue and it's really sunny. Get that. That is amazing. I don't know what that was, like a two-story building for chickens or something, or I don't know, like with a, almost like a turret. <laughs> That was amazing. I spent quite a lot of time in this village as a child because my grandparents used to live here. Now this very street actually. So I like to come back to this village every now and then, go for a walk, go to the little restaurant that I'll take you to today, which is quite new by the way. That sign says, that sign says, is there life after death? jump over our fence and you'll find out <laughs> because they have guard dogs. A lot of um, houses in these small towns or villages like this one, they have these signs on the fences which say dangerous dog, a dog that bites, all sorts of warnings about the dog that lives uh, on the other side of the fence to, to stop you from entering. I'm not sure how dangerous these dogs are, but certainly most families, most houses will have a dog. And as I'm walking through the town, you will hear them barking. I mean, there's one um, here right now. There he goes. <laughs> well, there she goes. Could you? Could you? I think um, this dog must uh, sense that I like dogs because he or she is not barking that much. But anyway, one of the things that I love about this street is that it's right next to some farmland. If you look over this fence, you can just see the fields. There are loads of old fashioned little peasant houses in this street and in this village and villages like this one. Unfortunately, um, some of them are not in good condition, like these ones here. They're not, they're not looked after. I mean, look at this one, for example. Looks like this has fallen down. And I'm afraid. And can you see what that thing is in front of us? That tall thing ahead of me. We'll see more of those in a minute, but look at this house. A lot of these houses are not in good condition. Oh my God, you can actually see inside this one. Oh my God, this house has a traditional oven called Kemente. Oh my God, and they've got these old fashioned doors and these really thick walls. Just imagine the people like my grandparents who must have lived here back in the day. 
Well, I reckon my grandparents probably knew the people who used to live in that house. I might not show this footage to my grandmother. It might just be too sad for her to see the decline of her street. But some houses are in great condition. I love these old-fashioned little houses. I think they're very cute. And there's another dog barking down there behind me. And that's just the road leading to the open farmlands. Should we have a look at it? This is pretty cool actually. So we're here in the Great Plains of Hungary. Uh, it's a flat land, not a hill inside. So this street we've just walked down on, by the way, is called Toai Utsa, which means the bottom of the lake street or lake bottom street. And there is no pond, no lake to be seen here. I think a long, long time ago, before I was even born, there used to be some kind of a lake or pond here. When I was a child, I remember that we would come down here, which was at the back of my grandparents' garden. We would come down there on a winter's day and there'd be a little pond, but like the tiniest little pond, just enough for a toddler to ice skate on. And I was able to, well not ice skate, because I didn't have skates, but like, I was able to slip and slide around on the little pond and it would freeze back in the day, but I don't think there really is a pond anymore. They probably drained it for farmland over time, but yeah. It's still a lovely open space, lovely open farmlands. I like this view. Um, it is very flat. That's what we have here in the Great Plains of Hungary. You can see quite far away because of that. There you can see the, the church. I like this vista. Yeah, but then I did grow up with this, so I would like it, I guess. But enough of this looking backwards. Uh, let's go and have a look and, and see what there still is in the village. Let's carry on. A walk. Valahol egy kis faluban nem nyílnak már a bünkös dirózsák. Valahol egy ablak alatt elnémultak a szerelmes nót. Valahol egy csöndes utcán szomorúan álmodozva jár. Ne tudja meg soha senki, hogy még mindig valakire várok. My mom said that apparently this house back in the day used to be the rich, the rich person's house and she was sorry to see that it's not in good condition now. So, well, yeah. They have typically have a lot of outbuildings, these uh, village houses for the animals and sometimes they have also, you know, storerooms, but they also sometimes have a so-called out kitchen, which is like a second kitchen, not in the main house, I guess for cooking particularly smelly stuff that we do in Hungary. <laughs> this is a nice little house as well. Yet again, this one's not in good nick, so really it's just a mix of nice ones, nicely tended ones, nicely tended two ones. Hello, doggy. This is what I'm saying, they're constantly barking at you. These dogs are constantly barking. I guess they're good guard dogs. They're doing their job well, aren't they? But I um, love this uh, feature of Hungarian architecture, these, uh, these porches, this of half open, half closed porches, little covered walkways, I love it. Here there's another one falling down here, another fallen down one here. Look how low the windows were actually. And can you see that the building material is something unusual, it's not only bricks, it's bricks at the back, but the rest is not bricks. It's kind of mud, a mixture of mud and hay. If you're interested in knowing more about that, 
let me know in the comments because that's a very traditional Hungarian building material and uh, I'll be happy to make a video about that. Another dog. Hello. He's not interested in us, I don't think. And uh, some local kids on a bike. Some bales of hay here. Obviously, this is a working agricultural town. A lot of people here keep animals or have land or work in agriculture. Here's some other building. I'm not sure what this is, but it's a very long, very big building. Okay, so it's getting pretty chilly. I think it's probably about time to get lunch. Let me show you this um, fantastic little restaurant. We just ordered um, ordered some drinks. I ordered a uh, raspberry cordial, which is a very traditional Hungarian soft drink. So perfect, my cordial just arrived. My raspberry cordial just arrived. <laughs> and it's basically soda mixed with well, raspberry cordial. It's pretty good. And we also ordered our food already. And we got, um, my mom got a goulash soup. And I got something which is like um, fresh egg noodles with Hungarian curd cheese. We also got a village pizza which I'm looking forward to trying. And it's got gherkins on it, which is something I've never had before on a pizza. And I think they do very nice sourdough pizza here. I've had it before, so I know. They do very nice sourdough pizza here. But that's not, not their speciality. Their speciality is of like these really traditional home cooking, uh, regional dishes. Um, it's really worth checking out this restaurant if you're in the area. And the whole decor is really, really cute. There's lots of retro, there's lots of retro stuff. And there's loads of things kind of evoking this sort of long gone peasant. <laughs> style of living taken in the best sense of the word. Everything here that's on display in the restaurant, all the furniture, all the all the decorative objects, everything has been really carefully curated by the owners. This is very much a family-run business and lots of the items I've heard have been donated to them by their customers. Something they found in the attic or something they had um, tucked away for decades and they thought this place would be a good home for it and it really is. It's such a fantastic atmosphere in here. I love it here. Köszönöm, hogy megtaláltad. 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 Köszönöm, hogy megtalált
ما هي هيك نعم دوروش دوروش كان ايه يعني انا دوري انت كمان انا بريك شو انا بتم That was a very substantial lunch, but there's just a little bit of space left for a typical Hungarian carnival donut and an espresso. And look at the cup the espresso came in. It's the cutest little enamel cup ever. It's like using doll's house crockery. <laughs> so we also ordered the donut as it was around carnival time in Hungary. And these donuts are traditional carnival desserts. The white stripe on the side is the mark of a good traditional Hungarian carnival donut. Hungarian donuts almost always have a little indent in the middle for the jam that you put on. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to make a video about Hungarian cakes. <laughs> I'm just on the outskirts of the village now and it's really very windy here. I hope you can hear me. So I was saying earlier there's a very agricultural area and here is a farm right behind me. Chapter number five! <laughs> there are hay bales. And there's something very interesting. I don't know if you can see it. Something very interesting, very typical of this region or, or uh, another region that's very close to us, which is Hortobágy. And it's that well over there. And if you know what a nodding donkey is, it's a little bit like that, but it's a traditional Hungarian one. And it's called Gémeskút. After looking at this interesting well, we headed back home. We went past some agricultural buildings that belong to a company who grow crops and produce farm seeds, and even a disused Soviet airbase and barracks. If you'd like to see a video about that, let me know and I'll see what I can do. So that was my Saturday in a little Hungarian village. I'm very glad that you joined me and I hope you join me for the next video as well. Bye for now!